All right, this is part 14 of a video tutorial series on how to create planes in Plane Maker. So we got this plane pretty much to the point where we've done everything we could do given the tools we have, given Plane Maker and using either Photoshop or GIMP to paint it. And what we would do next, I mean, I could still put flap tracks on here and do some other minor tweaks on it. For example, change the airfoil maybe to match the Embraer's supercritical airfoil that is in use by this plane. But anything beyond that is already the domain of dedicated exterior 3D graphics programs. I do want to get into that, but just to map out the road a little bit from here. Now, we've made a simple airliner. Well, you can make, with all these menus that X-Plane has, you can make all sorts of different types of airplanes, including propeller airplanes, helicopters, VTOLs, fighter jets. You know, you have all these tools here to make weapons and all that stuff. I encourage you to explore those things. I might get back to these in future tutorials when we talk about stuff like making custom sounds and custom objects and stuff like that. I'll probably get back to these menus, but there's no point for me to go through every single one of these menus and show you what they can do. Uh, I will show you one here, however, the airfoils menu. Now the thing about planes is if a company creates a plane, one of the secret sauces of the plane is its airfoil. And there are companies that have spent a lot of time making airfoils and they keep that data pretty secret. So you won't find brochures on that online necessarily. But Plane Maker includes a whole bunch of airfoils that you find here. And usually you'll find a fit in one of these airfoils. And they kind of have a description embedded in the name. So you have a good chance of finding a good airfoil for your plane. Now if that doesn't work, if that's not enough, you can actually create your own airfoil provided you know what you're doing. Personally, I'm just learning my way around Airfoil Maker right now. If you go to your X-Plane folder, you have Plane Maker in this directory, and you also have Airfoil Maker. And I'm going to open up Airfoil Maker and show you what that's all about. Now in Airfoil Maker, you have a couple of numbers here. There's a Reynolds number, and if you hover your mouse over this, it is equal to the cord of the wings times the speed of the airplane times a constant. Light planes may have a Reynolds number of about 9 million. You can open up any one of these airfoils that are included in X-Plane. And uh, there's one that I started making for this Embraer. I haven't finished yet because I'm still doing research on it. The coefficients at uh, plus and minus 180 degrees. See, so if you go down here, you see that there is the alpha, which means the angle of attack of the wing. If you're here close to zero, you would expect this green line, which is the coefficient of lift, to be at zero as well. So this would basically mean if the plane's wing is angled at zero, you should be getting zero lift if it's a symmetrical airfoil. If it's not symmetrical, you should be getting a little bit of lift if the angle is zero. And instead of having the coefficient of lift being calculated across 180 degrees of wing alpha, you can go and just calculate according to 20 degrees of wing alpha. So here, if I place the cursor now at zero, it's as if I'm zoomed in a little more, and I have a coefficient of lift of 0.15. That's that green line passing through here. That means at zero angle of attack of pitch of the wing, you have 0 0.15 coefficient of lift. Now, you have the coefficient of moment represented as a yellow line here. That basically means what is the wing's tendency to flip upwards or downwards? What is the moment on the wing at any given angle? And this red line here is the coefficient of drag. The closer the angle of attack of the wing is to zero, the closer the coefficient of drag is to zero as well. All this data that you can enter here, you can probably do some research online, which I haven't done yet, because I'm just venturing into this whole airfoil maker stuff, but you can enter in this data. What I was particularly interested in for this Embraer airfoil is the fact that it has a specific shape. And I looked up that shape on the internet, and I can match that shape roughly uh, with this outline of this plane's airfoil and you can come close. That really helps you just to model the plane a little bit better. And once I have my airfoil, I can save it and uh, load it up in Plane Maker. Now it should be available here in the Airfoils folder. And another tip again, if you want to make your own airfoil, make sure that if you want to distribute your plane online, you have to come up with that folder structure and make a folder inside your airplanes folder called Airfoils and include that airfoil in there. I'm just going to load up the uh, Embraer Supercritical Airfoil to show you that there is a difference between the shape of one plane segment and the next. What we've done here, I've loaded a different airfoil up, and you can see by this overlap here that doesn't match up, 
that this first segment of the wing has a different airfoil than this second set of the wing. The shape alone is for visual purposes only. It doesn't affect the characteristics of your plane. Okay, so the other thing we could still do with this plane if we were really, really ambitious is we could make flap tracks here. And with flap tracks, basically I would go to uh, miscellaneous bodies and I would create some new bodies uh, that are shaped like those flap tracks. I would position them right under the wings and I would hook them up to the flaps so that when the flaps are extended, these flap tracks would also extend themselves. So for example, I go here, lateral arm, say maybe 30 feet, and then I would say this body is attached to the flap number one. So I would select flap number one from here and it would attach itself to the flap. See, there's that object that I just created. And now if I hit show with moving controls, this part will go down together with the flaps. So I would reposition this part to line itself up right where the flap track is of this plane and make the flap track for it. Now, there is a point where I personally stop working in Plane Maker because Plane Maker is not my favorite 3D graphics editor. There's better 3D graphics editors that give you a lot more flexibility once you learn their interface to make these complicated parts and they also allow you to animate these parts and those parts can then be imported into Plane Maker and the way you do that is you go to Standard, you go to Miscellaneous Objects and here I can browse to an object provided it's in the folder of the plane that I'm currently working on and I could load up this object and just like what we did with the flap track I could determine its position on the plane and I could also determine its heading pitch and roll offset and I could attach it to any number of body parts in this plane so that it moves along with those body parts. So you can mix and match, you could make detailed uh, 3D graphics parts, say for example I'm happy with the plane the way it is but I just want to make flap tracks in Blender. I can make those flap tracks in Blender import them into Plane Maker and attach them to these flaps. Same thing for example if you look down here. The gear doors are pretty rudimentary for my taste. I would really love to go in and make better quality gear doors. When we're starting to work with 3D graphics parts we can actually fix all of these things and the plane will end up looking a lot more realistic and a lot better. So this video would be the conclusion of what I would call the beginner series of tutorials for Plane Maker because next we're going to get into heavy customization which will require external software programs like Blender and for sounds we would require a program like Audacity and I like working with open source programs so that's what I'm gonna take you through so open source means you don't have to pay any money and you can still do amazing stuff with that so I hope you enjoyed this series this series covered pretty much everything you need to know about making generic general aviation airplanes provided you don't get into too complicated stuff but I'm sure if you followed along this far you won't be hard-pressed to learn how to do stuff like artificial stability or vertical takeoff and landing controls and stuff like that. If you get stuck on that, don't worry, maybe I'll get to that in a future tutorial when I make some outlandish plane and I want to show you how I did that. I guess there's one more thing I should show you before wrapping up this series and that is the viewpoint menu. The viewpoint menu allows me to determine the position of the pilot's head so when you activate side views this will determine what part of the plane you see when you look out the side windows. Again, whenever you're in doubt, you can just hover your mouse over an item and Plane Maker will give you a little bit of a description of what you're dealing with. And here you would enter in your name, like for example, this plane is created by myself, so I would enter my name here. If I've borrowed any parts from anybody, I would reference them here and acknowledge their work on this particular plane. Here I can enter a description in for this plane. And ICAO code, this is used for plugins like X Squawk Box. This will help identify your plane when you're flying online with other people. And you can also create a call sign for this plane. And I didn't do this yet, but this number is best probably matched up with one of the planes that you, and you can enter in whatever call number you'd like. Other than that, this should pretty much cover the basics. And uh, if you have any more questions, you can always join the xplane.org community and uh, ask questions where I posted these videos on the forums as well. And uh, if you want to download the plane, I'll have it available there too in those forums. So again, that should wrap it up for the beginner phase, and next we're probably going to go into intermediate and advanced stuff. I haven't mapped out exactly yet what I want to do, but I do want to introduce you to Blender. I do want to start with the basics and move along at a pace that if you were able to follow along so far, you should have no problems diving into Blender and learning tons of cool stuff there. It's extremely rewarding to start working with 3D graphics. So I hope you enjoyed this series, and I hope you found it useful. Leave feedback, uh, rate the video, Sign up for my YouTube channel, spread the word, join the community, 
and let's make XPlane a better simulator together. Thanks for watching.